I'm Charlotte Durr, and this is your hot tip of the day, identifying the inferior vena cava. We can use the inferior vena cava to help us assess volume status in our critically ill patients in the emergency department. And there's a couple different views you can use to obtain the inferior vena cava. One of the most common locations to look for the inferior vena cava is using the subcostal window and identifying the right side of the heart and then rotating your transducer 90 degrees with the indicator pointing towards the patient's head to identify the inferior vena cava as it courses through the liver, past the diaphragm, and up to the right atrium. In this location, sometimes we can encounter bowel gas in our gassy patients, or even have a hard time getting a good view simply because of body habitus. It's nice to have a backup location in your pocket in case this technique proves to be difficult. Think about taking your transducer and going just anterior to the mid-axillary line on the right side. What we typically use is a fast window to look for fluid in Morrison's pouch. Keeping the transducer indicator pointing towards the patient's head, you can identify the liver and the kidney, and then just sweeping anteriorly, just slightly, you'll pass that kidney traveling anterior and identify the inferior vena cava. Just deep to the inferior vena cava in this view, you can also see the abdominal aorta. Another good view to check for the size of the aorta if you're concerned about aortic aneurysm, but you're having too much gas in that subcostal view when looking at that proximal aorta. Once you locate the IVC, make sure that it's truly the IVC. The IVC has very thin walls and it makes it more collapsible. So you can first center the IVC on your screen get a view that you're happy with, and then have the patient take a quick snip. And you'll notice that the IVC is collapsible. Traveling even more interior, sweeping through, you can see the gallbladder and the portal triad. But let's focus back on the IVC. Once you've identified the IVC, you want to take your IVC measurements two centimeters below its entry into the right atrium. Using your M mode, You can do a quick measurement, quick sniff. I'm going to take your calculation using the measurement and measure the size of the IVC and its inner wall, the end of expiration to get your first measurement, and then measuring the walls again of the IVC during inspiration looking for that percent change. You can also use a venal cable index as well to help you decide whether or not this patient needs volume resuscitation. It's also helpful to know that you can go back and remeasure the IVC after volume replacement to see how well the patient is doing, whether or not they need more volume, or whether you can stop at that point. You're looking for a collapse of approximately 50%. If the collapse is more than 50%, you need to be concerned about the possibility of a volume deficit. If the IVC barely collapses, you might consider the possibility a patient might have a fluid overload status or something along the lines of a pericardial tamponade or even a tension pneumothorax, which would cause dilation of the IVC. That's your hot IVC tip of the day. Now it's your turn.